Well, welcome back to Lucor Automotive. Uh, last video you saw with the CJ7. Uh, we were replacing the rear axle. That's been replaced. And we've got a whole brand new axle assembly in the rear and we're hoping that's gonna fix our herky-jerky problem that the customer uh, was complaining about. There's a, a lot of problems wrong with the rear end. Um, what we've got to do now is gonna be put brakes on this thing so we can actually test drive it and drive it safely. And then get it on the road and see if that fixes our problem. So. Welcome to Lucor Automotive, where we work on all kinds of things around here. Anyway, let's get to work. Let's get the front wheels off. My brake pads and rotors are here. Uh, and then we can put our diff cover on and take it for test drive, see if our springs being loose, or our U-bolts on our rear axle being loose, is what was causing our surging issue. Because I think that's probably what it was. Um, if it if the surging has gone away, then we'll be finished with this. If it hasn't gone away, we'll put it up on the dyno and verify uh, what the issue is from there. Um, but I think it's going to be the fact that these rear uh, U-bolts were <laughs> pretty loose. I just found some body bolts that were loose, so I went around and tightened up all the body mount bolts. Um, they have a spacer on the inside, so they should lock down onto the spacer like they were quite a few that were loose. So. Well, you can see the inboard pads completely gone. Outboard pads probably at the end of its life since these are riveted on both sides. Same situation. So the calipers and hoses are probably okay. I don't know. I'll have to think about that one. Maybe, uh... You would think even if the pedal was being rowed, it would wear both sides evenly, but we'll take a look when we put the new pads in. Correctly, but they retracted fine when I took it apart. So I we'll have to put it together with new pads and see if they drag any after we get them seated in. Well, not as bad, but it's still in rivets. Need some reading glasses. I can't see nothing. About a minute since I've done those. Let's grab my socket. Our first washer off, or, or our lock washer. Now, sorry, our lock nut comes off first, then our lock washer, which folds over and locks the other one in. That's pretty tight. Now we remove our actual nut that gives our bearing preload. Not a lot. Just enough to take the free play out of it. Too bad. We can change our rotor out. Alright. Let's knock our studs out of our hubs, put our new rotors on.
The wheel bearings actually look pretty good. The grease is still clean. Throw that washer on the ground. The bearing goes in. And then our keyed washer goes in. You have to make sure that key is on there, otherwise the driver's side will make itself loose. The key goes into the way on the spindle, and then we put on our first nut, which is our bearing preload. Nut one for bearing preload. My socket over it did. Make it tight and then I loosen it up. And it's really just snug. And then we put on our lock washer, which also has a master spline. That goes there. And our lock nut goes on. We fold a tab over to lock it in place. Time to put the wheels back on. It's actually now it'll be time to bleed the brakes. Because the brake fluid is pretty, pretty gross in this, so I'm going to flush the brake, flu brake fluid system while I have it up on the rack. Oh, there we go. It's a plastic in them. That's different. different. I wonder if that's something somebody did to tighten up the caliper. I don't know. calipers back on my hand. Um, these are pretty low torque setting for these caliper pin bolts. Uh, but they get cross threaded a lot. You have to do thread repairs on these a lot. So I like to make sure they start straight and true with my hand tools and then just lock them down. You can use power tools but it's not all right. Um, there is an inboard and outboard pad on these CJ setups. Uh, the inboard pad is a different shape than the outboard pad. And the outboard pads will not go on the inside position. Normally the inboard pads have wear indicators. You can see there's holes drilled on them. And normally there's a wear tab, but apparently they don't do those anymore. They don't want to let you know that uh, your brakes are about to destroy your rotors, apparently. And I need my pliers. And I need a screwdriver. Sometimes you got to help them. Gotta help the drive shaft out. You can do that a couple of different ways. The end's threaded so you can stick a bolt in there and pull it out normally. Flip 
fully engaged. Springs work good. Good, engages, disengages, four wheel drive. Wheel bearings are flashed. New brake pads, new rotors. Let's bleed these brakes. Well, I got the blur brakes bled out, uh, new fluid through the whole system. Uh, I got the wheels back on, and you drop down toward the lug nuts. I'm gonna take her test drive, see how she drives. Um, and see if our surging is still there. If our surging is still there, I'm going to stick it up on the chassis dyno. We'll strap it down and we'll see if we can figure out what's going on with this thing. Because it's, it's a really weird, like, jerky situation. At least it was, but the back axle was also loose and on the leaf springs. So it could very well have been our problem. Let's find out. Did that fix the problem? No. Did it fix the brakes? Yes. Fix the running problem? No. So, we gotta figure out what's going on with that. That's gonna be a whole other episode. So, this is not unfortunately the end of the saga when it comes to this CJ7. If you're interested in more, stay tuned. It's coming next. We got more work to do.